Hello everyone. I welcome you to the webinar about IntelliPit sketching in Universal Plant Viewer. <clears throat> My name is Christina Reich. I'm product owner for the IntelliPit part inside UPV and also for some other products in the CA Experts product suite like Universal Reporter and everything that is related uh, to PID. Today, I'm going to discuss about IntelliPit sketching. I'm going to start with the um, description of the functionality and I'm going to start with a few slides. Um, the first one will be about the placement of regular objects like circle, valve, etc., but also the placement of objects from the catalog. In addition, we also allow the user to copy original objects which come from um, the source data, for instance, um, smart PID or PDF PIDs which have been converted to UPV. And it is also possible to place labels and comments on top of these objects so that uh, you also have the corresponding text information which is necessary for those changes. And in the new release, which is going to come soon, we have implemented two additional functions like um, the possibility to see the list of the sketch objects inside the sketch and also the possibility to hide <clears throat> and show original objects so that you can uh, easier um, make your sketch according to your wishes. And of course, it is possible to create the corresponding documentation, for instance, by saving the sketches to PDF files. As you can see here in the first slide, we have the possibility to place, um, I call them regular objects like lines, which in our case will end up to be pipe runs. We can place circles and rectangles, which are stretchable. We can also place valves from this level. Some of the components are stretchable, others are scalable. And we also have a catalog available. And if we place objects from this catalog, like for instance, this diaphragm pump, there are two ways of changing the position, for instance, uh, mirroring the object, uh, scaling the object. It is possible to work with handles directly in the graphics. So you have these two handles for mirroring and for rotating, and they will have an effect, of course, on the properties of the object. But it is also possible to use directly the attributes, so uh, you can use the mirror function from the property grid, you can key in another angle and then the component will rotate. And of course, you can use a scale factor to make it uh, larger or smaller. As I already mentioned, you can also copy original objects. So, for instance, if you need um, this this pump uh, with nozzles and motor and so on, uh, again, you can uh, click on the components in the source data and you have a copy function which will copy them to sketch objects. And in that case, the symbol will be called uh, copied and the property sketch item will be set to true so that you know that uh, you are now using uh, a new item, which in our case is a sketch item. From the labeling point of view, there are two possibilities to place text on these objects. One possibility is to key in the text in properties, like for instance here in the name property. So if you want to give your new pump a name, you can do that just by keying in the corresponding text. And then you can drag the property to the graphic, place it at the right position. It will be associated with the object. And in case you want to create a report, this is a visible attribute corresponding to the sketch item. In addition, 
It is also possible to place comments, which means instead of using an attribute, you can just create a new comment. You can place it to the corresponding position and you can key in the text that you want to have inside this comment. The difference between the two, these ones you can export in reports because they are real property values. Uh, the comments right now um, you cannot export to any other source like Excel file and so on. You only will have them <clears throat> placed in graphics. As I already mentioned, in the new release, there will be two additional functions in IntelliBit sketching. One of them is that for everything that you have placed in the sketch, you will now uh, see the corresponding item in the list of sketch items. So in this case, you can just double click on one of them and the PID will highlight the corresponding object in graphics. Something that probably is even more important is that now you also have the possibility to select original items like this branch, including the valve. And you have three new buttons in this uh, command list for the sketching items. One of them will allow you, if you click, to ha uh, hide these components. The next one will visualize them again, but in a transparent gray color so that later on you can decide maybe to take some of them back or even to take the complete uh, branch with the valve back so that it's visible again. And this function um, is really pretty important if you have large PIDs which are very full to make some space for the sketch objects which you are going to place. Once you have placed your sketch objects and once you have uh, labeled them with the corresponding texts and attributes. You can also create reports for these objects. And the reporting engine, if you would use, for instance, the symbol name will show you if it's a copied one or not. It will show you how you called this new object. And also from the reporting engine, you can use the highlight function to find the object in graphic. Last but not least, as I already said, you can um, create the corresponding output from your sketches by saving the graphic to PDF. And here, uh, what I also want to mention, uh, you can also use multiple sketches on the same PID. And if they are all active, they will all go to the corresponding PDF. So you could create um, sketches with different colors and in the end save each one to a separate PDF, but you can also save the combination of one or two or three of them into the PDF, which you will export. So much to the theory. <clears throat> now I'm going to switch to UPV and I'm going to start the live demo. So here we are inside UPV and we are going to create um, two sketches. The first of them is a sketch which will be uh, a pump rework. We are going to change the color to red so that everything that we are placing new will be red. And we are going to go here to this corner here on top and um, first of all, I will mark some objects like this pipe and flow arrows and so on, and also these uh, signal lines. And I'm going to uh, show you how it's possible to hide them. This is the hide button over here. And when I clicked it, these objects, they will disappear. And the important part is that they are not available for selection anymore. So this means uh, you cannot by accident click on one of them. But if you really want to see what has been hidden, you can use this button and you could eventually select uh, some objects and uh, refer to them so that they are visible again. Okay, now that we have done this, we are going to start to place a line. 
and we will start here we will go in this direction we will go in this direction and as you see we have this little help information with the dashed line which will uh, show us uh, the same um, horizontal vertical position so that it's easier to place uh, the pipes and now when i start to place the components i will start with a circle and this circle is supposed to be a new pump you see it has this button so that i can drag it uh, larger or smaller and if i click on the attributes i will see that it's a circle and it also gets automatically this name which i could of course change if i want to place a more corresponding object i will delete um, this one i will go to the catalog go to equipment and here I will select a diaphragm pump. I will place it in the same position, go a little bit closer. And if we have a look at the attributes, you see that uh, there are these three parameters, mirror, rotation, scale. So if I want to make it larger, I can click here, for instance, 1.5. If it's too large, I can reduce it a little. And if I want to mirror it, I can use the flag so that it will revert to the other position. And of course, I could also rotate it, which doesn't make so much sense. But just to show you that it rotates, if you key in the rotation factor. Uh, but also, it's possible to use those handles directly on the object. So if I activate the handles, I can use this one to rotate 45 degrees, for instance. I can use uh, the mirror handle to drag to the new position and it's really pretty easy to use uh, these functions as you can see. We are going to place also a valve here in this location, make it a little bit larger, um, copy it to the other side here for instance, and we are also copying maybe the check valve from the original graphic down here. And if we want this motor, including the text inside, we can use the same copy function to put it on top of the pump. So now we have these new objects available. What is still missing is the reducer. So let's take this one also and put it over here. And now we can start to um, add text information to those components and this is pretty easy we can click on each one go to the name property and say this is supposed to be 21.102c this is supposed to be v400 and this is supposed to be v v401 for instance, and here the re reducer. Um, I could key in eight inch, six inch, and then I can place these labels. So I will take the first one, place it down here. It's automatically also saved below the sketch. I can take away the leader line and the other ones which I'm going to place now, uh, they are by default without leader line. So as you see, I can click on each component, place the text below it. And then I also have the labels which I need in graphics. And if I want to move them a little bit, I can just click on them and move them to a new position. If I want to give this pump some more information than what is visible in these properties, I can use the comment function. And as you see, I have placed this comment here. I can call it redundant pump and place it maybe below the text. And uh, with this modification, <clears throat> let's say that we have finished uh, the first part, which means we have finished our first sketch. We can close it by using this arrow. And then there is a button which you can use to activate the sketch, deactivate the sketch. And as you see, 
the hidden components, they automatically appear once I click the sketch away. And if I activate the sketch, uh, they are hidden because the information, if it's hidden or not, is saved directly in the sketch. Okay, now we go to the second part. We create a second sketch. We call it Vessel Rework. We change the color to blue. We go to the corresponding position, which is the one over here. And because this will also affect an existing vessel, we are going to color this one to blue as well. And now we are going to copy a group which is a little bit larger because we want to use it a second time. And um, I'm using the same copy command and I take the complete group and put it here on top of the existing one. And I will add a new pipe from here, maybe to this uh, vertical position. I will place it on top of this one. I will copy this valve here and maybe put another one next to the object. And then we can start to uh, name these objects. So this one will be D241. This will be V124. And V125. And now <clears throat> we can also name the new pipe segments. So for instance, this one, for instance, will be water. Um, it will be the number 180 and three inch and piping material class. And we are going to place this label on top of the pipe. And then it's pretty easy to take the same value and copy it to the next segment, change the number, eventually also change the size, place it so that um, we have the labels available. We can also label, of course, the vessel. We can label the components. And for the vessel, if we also need uh, another text that we want to represent, we will again create a command and call it main vessel and place it down here. And because it would be a good idea to also uh, see where the OPCs are coming from or going to, we can also use the command function here. And the first one, we will say that it is from 003 and place it here. And the other one is um, 2002 and place it here. And <clears throat> we have created our second sketch. And if we have a look at the sketch items on the right side, we see all these components that were created. So uh, in front, you see the name property. And um, in brackets, you see the symbol information. So because this is a copied symbol, it will uh, have the name copied. And this is what you see here on the right side. And here you can very easily double click on one component and it will just automatically go to that one and zoom to it. You can also uh, zoom to pipe information, to valve information. And as you see, it is really very easy to um, go through all those graphical objects. So as you see, you can create uh, the sketches if you save the sketch 
the PID will revert to original, so also the color of this changed uh, vessel will go back to original. It will only be saved in the sketch. And now that we have two sketches, we can uh, show one of them. We can show the other one, but we could also show uh, both, as you can see. And in the same way, when we now want to create our documentation, we can use the save to PDF function and just click the OK button and then go to the output files. So in this case, I want to save it to the pump station file and overwrite the existing one. And it will now create the PDF based on the red color from the elements that I placed in the pump station. And if I want to do it for the other one, I can use exactly the same function uh, just before I activate the sketch. And then I click on PDF, I click on OK, and I use the second PDF file to create a new output from here. So this is, I think, very important that you can save your output. And what I also want to show you now is that um, we can save the sketches. And just decide where we want to save them. Let's call them um, two sketches. And then I will delete them from here. And I will use the reload button. And then, as you see, they reload it to this position. And I can display the first one. I can display the second one. And if I uh, click on the edit button, they will uh, open up in edit mode. And I could continue to work on the sketch by placing new objects and so on. And the next time when I save it, it will also be a part of this sketch. So this is pretty much what I wanted to show you. Um, I, I will now have a look um, into the question that you have um, placed in the question mark. And um, in case you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to contact us. We will, of course, uh, answer them later on via email. So thanks a lot for your interest. I will now go through the questions. Um, one of the questions is, can the sketches be saved in a central location or database? Um, the answer to this one, we have another product which is called Workflow System, which is um, available to be used together with uh, UPV. And in case you are using this uh, product, uh, you can save all the sketches in a central location and all the users will be able to visualize uh, sketches which other people have created too. Another question, does the same also work for PDF PIDs which were created from PDF files? The answer is, if you have used PDF bit adapter to convert the files into IntelliBit so that they are, are available here, uh, like I have these two little examples, then of course you can also create a sketch on top of this graphic and you can also use the copy function to, uh, to copy graphic from here. But it will have, um, in some sense, the reduced intelligence because there are no additional properties here on top of the graphic. Let me have another look. Um, can we highlight specific lines like groupings to be specific test packaging? Um, 
Well, this is, I think, not really referring to to the sketch. It is more referring to the regular graphic. Of course, we do have the possibility to create custom attributes. And by using those attributes, you can uh, put things together and mark them and then also assign colors to, to those objects which are belonging to a package or to a certain system. Um, there is a question about the source file. If this refers to where does the original graphic come from? Well, um, the graphic can be from smart PID. So for instance, what you see here has been created in uh, smart PID and then converted uh, to, to UPV in Telepit. But it's also possible if you have PDF files um, to convert them and to put them into UPV after the conversion, but they will have a different kind of intelligence than what you have from SPIT. Okay, I think we are done for now. Um, in case there are more questions, I will answer them um, per mail. Thanks a lot for your attention. Have a great day and uh, stay safe.